Hello and welcome to our Reboot Review. I'm Paul. And I'm Dave. And this week we are discussing the episode Mega Frame. This episode originally aired in Canada on January 3rd, 1998, but wouldn't air in the U.S. until December 26th, 1998. Almost a full yeah. year later. Yeah. Which, I don't know why, but whatever. All the marvelous minds and fantastical things that happen in U.S. studios for putting TV shows from other places. I, I kind of wonder if it's not because... Like, the show has gotten darker, and maybe that was what delayed it in the States, but that's just a guess on my part. Possibly. But then, of course, you kind of wait the States with certain darker things, and you're kind of like, hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Alrighty, so let us start off with the number one film at the box office, and I'm going to save you time, because it's going to be the same one until we finish this season. It's Titanic. Because of course it's Titanic. Because it's Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was very much a thing. Yes. Like, just on the outside, sort of looking into it being a thing, it was just sort of like, okay. It looks cool when the shit split with the ship splits in half, but it's like, okay. Uh, I've never been a fan of the Titanic movie. I think it's overly long and boring, but that's just my two cents. Anyway, yeah. moving along to video games, we've only got two this week, um, and neither that I'm terribly familiar with, but maybe you will be. Hmm. Uh, so, oh, okay, now that I saw the box for this one, it I, I know the box for it. Uh, okay, so on January 5th, if you were uh, a Nintendo 64 gamer, you could pick up a little game called Robotron 64. Are you familiar with in, this? Only in the same case as you. I've seen this sitting on store shelves for a multitude of years. The memories are streaming back, but just the marvelous case of I have not touched this game for most likely the obvious reasons. Yeah, it's a twin stick shooter, it sounds like. On the N64, I don't know how that would work. Apparently. Yeah, since the N64 kind of technically only has one stick. Oh, you use the stick for movement and the C buttons for firing. That seems weird. Okay. That is a thought, though there is kind of the case of there's the trigger right under the stick that would work. Yeah, yeah. Oh, anyway, uh, if you were a PlayStation gamer on January 8th, Although this only came out in Japan at the time, but uh, uh, I don't even know how to explain this game, just looking at it. It's called No One Can Stop Mr. Domino. Indeed. You play as a domino. Yes. Uh, it's, in a multitude of stages. It's, a, it's an endless runner slash puzzle game, apparently. It looks interesting. I kind of want to play it, but I don't think I'd play it for more than about half an hour. Yeah, and then of course the case of how easy it would supposedly be to find, how well has this kind of been reserve, preserved, and just like, will we ever see Mr. Domino again with after his first release? Have there been other game releases? Oh, it was published by Acclaim in North America. Oh boy. And developed Ooh. by Art Dink? Who the hell is Art Dink? What else have they made? A uh, bunch of stuff that only went to Japan. A uh, bunch of stuff I've never heard of. Uh, did they have anything? Oh, they did SimCity 2000 for the PlayStation. Okay, that's something. Um, Tactics Ogre. Okay, that sounds familiar. Um, they've been around forever, I'll give them that. But a lot that of... Is definitely true. A lot of their stuff looks like it has never left Japan, or I've never heard of it. Yeah. Okay. Understandable, but also a case of a little sad. Yes, and let us go to the number one song in America, which is still the Elton John song that we talked about last week, Candle in the Wind 97 slash Something About the Way You Look Tonight. Yeah. 
Yeah, because they're things. They are very much things. Yes. Um, although it isn't going to be up there for much longer. Ooh. Though, I suppose that's the question of, is it going to be overtaken by something that I'll be somewhat tolerant of? Or is it going to be something that I'm going to be very disappointed in? Um, I'm, I'm willing to bet that you'll have heard of the band who overtakes, but you might not remember them until I tell you about them. It'll be one of those, like, you know how you have those, like, memories that until somebody mentions it, you didn't know that you remembered that thing? I think this yeah. band will be one of those. Where you'll hear Radio. the name and you'll go like, oh, I remember them. But if I didn't mention yeah. them, you'd go the rest of your life without thinking about them. That is true. I suppose it will just be the question of whether it will put me into a horrible mental spiral of pain and destruction. And or if it will just be something of, oh, that thing, neat. Uh, no, I mean, from memory and, and we're talking about music and, and me. So who knows? But I remember them being fine. Okay. Well, if you remember it as fine, then it should be nothing too horrible and mind-consuming. But yeah, we'll get to that when we get to that, I'm sure. All right, so let us get to the episode. So, let's see what Megabyte managed to do with Mainframe while we were God. All righty, so the saucy mare arrives to a heavily damaged Mainframe under the control of Megabyte. Uh, they are in preparation for an assault on the principal office, and Bob gets abducted by Hexadecimal. So we finally return to Mainframe. Uh, and we're, what, 12 episodes into the season? Yeah. I was surprised it took us so long to get back. I figured it would happen within, you know, like a handful of episodes, but they definitely took their time getting us back here. Um, and... I will say that the damaged mega frame, main fr mainframe, mega frame, whatever you want to call it, does look pretty cool. Yeah, I think it's a case of when I got to this episode and was seeing everything that they were showing with the episode at the time, as well as the flashbacks that they went into with how everything got to that sort of level. It brought back memories of the season one episode of Dot having that uh, mental sort of thought of oh god if this doesn't this one event doesn't go well it could mess up all of mainframe and sort of seeing her vision of how that all sort of looked and there were a couple of correlations there were a couple things that were like way off but also understandable but it was kind of the case of yeah dot probably isn't gonna be happy with how things are going yeah and we got a new intro that kind of focuses more on dot as well yes and dot has her like her new, uh, her, her redesign, which looks pretty good, I thought. Mm. Again, it kind of matches up fairly decently with her last appearance before it switched over to Matrix's story after getting absorbed from the game, but still keeps most of the same design, just updated. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, so I thought this episode was fine. It's kind of reestablishing... Um, kind of the status quo because we're finally back at mainframe and oh crap now we have to kind of deal with megabyte and everything and there's only three episodes after this one in the season so we kind of got to kind of get to our end game here pretty quickly but this was a fine episode i thought okay so don't have too much concern with either things being too rushed with the episode going along, uh, going into these last couple episodes, or is that still a fear in your head? Uh, not really. Because um, I feel like three episodes is enough time to kind of deal with what they have to deal with. And, mm. like, I also... So, so the show's cancelled, and then they do two movies after it, so I'm like, well... Maybe the season ends on a cliffhanger, and then the two movies kind of wrap things up. So I I'm not terribly worried that we're going to be left on, like, a ridiculous cliffhanger and not get a resolution. Okay. Now yeah, with those sorts of thoughts there. I think at the very most, with coming to this episode again, especially with 
them all sort of getting back together and especially with the cliffhanger from the end of this episode heading into the next episode of oh right there's hexadecimal and just the case of her coming back hooray but also her kidnapping bob and being like oh well is this just the status quo yes so she manages to abduct uh bob and i still am lukewarm on his redesign but whatever Hex is still a great character, and I'm excited to see what happens with her, because I really like Hex. Uh, that's definitely true. Um, I suppose one other particular thought with a couple of their characters in this episode were, what are your thoughts with Hack and Slash moving over to the other team's side? I mean, it makes sense. I mm. mean, they were never really villains. They were just kind of like, kind of bumbling fools. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And I can kind of see them going like, okay, Megabyte's gone a bit too far. We should maybe try and stop him. Because they weren't weren't necessarily like bad guys. They were more like, well, we work for Megabyte, so I guess we'll do this thing. Mm -hmm. And no sort of case where the thought sort of came up of after they either stopped working for Megabyte, that they'd either be destroyed or written out of the story that you're still happy they're still around to be the bumbling characters that they typically are yeah i don't have a problem with that because again like it's a kid's show so like you kind of need that comedic relief every once in a while and they're perfectly Mm. fine for that and i'm sure they sold a bunch of toys as well so yeah i know because i had one (laughs) anyway uh did you have anything else about this episode i feel like not really this episode's not super important it just kind of reestablishes things yeah mostly just kind of the case of running through everyone coming back to mainframe seeing how things were as well as going through a couple of flashbacks of how the firewall got burnt or brought down with hexadecimal breaking free going crazy and overloading the thing so she could break out and then her going on a marvelous destructive campaign against megabyte with her own fun abilities yes Yes. So, uh, if there's nothing else about this episode, next week we'll be discussing Showdown. <laughs> Stuff starts to happen. And Matrix and yeah. Megabyte get in a big fight. Yes. And I don't want to say anything more about that until next time. So, until yeah. then, I'm Paul. And I'm Dave.